So we got our last four person set up two well two podcasts ago was Sam and Dan. Mm-hmm. And at some point one of the plugs came undone. So Dan's mic was just unplugged the whole episode. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I felt so oh, no. bad. <laughs> so you don't have an external one that picks up everything not, that's in uh, the room? So, like, that has this, one, but it's not. It's, it's not good. It's not good enough. We don't have a shotgun mounted on yeah. it. Or, no. Yeah, no, no backup. Okay. You guys used to do, I think you guys used to do a ton of media stuff. Just, like, the Vikings brand yeah, as a whole. Yeah, a lot. Kind of, when we all had girlfriends, we kind of went away from it. It takes, <laughs> it takes time, man. I, I don't know. It's it's also, it's also, honestly, Christian, they got that good that they, that they didn't have time anymore. Right, they had no. so much other stuff to do on the side yeah. that it was hard to keep the social media stuff yeah. going. And the pandemic hit and stuff and we, we we tried to make stuff like um through that too but it was kind of after the pandemic it, it, it died a little bit the olympics and everything got more serious and there was like a lot of sponsors that demanded time and stuff yeah. so I, I really want to bring it back but also for me it's like uh it was a lot of work but not that much gain it's not easy to get sponsors in, no. in norway and you kind of have to do hard. it to to get a gain because because for me, it's been important to to have stuff on the side that brings income. Because it's not yeah, it's not super. It, it doesn't pay that much to right. be a professional we, beach me, we athlete. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, we kind of have to have these things on the side yeah. uh, that pays off. So I've been doing other stuff on the side, and because social media they just didn't pay that much yeah uh, but uh, we want to we really want to bring it back um we've hired our friend since childhood to do like a bunch of stuff but he's he's slow <laughs> <laughs> he's super slow at putting stuff out because he's a perfectionist he right. he makes documentaries for a living yeah. and yeah he, he spent like three years on one documentary that's oh, one and a half cow. hours yeah. long and he's yeah that's his like mindset he wants he has everything has to be perfect color grading has to be perfect yeah sound yeah. have to has to be perfect and he will just spend too much time on simple things so uh-huh. we've we have like the raw footage of probably like 20 vlogs yeah but it just <laughs> but hasn't just been hasn't edited put it together yeah it hasn't been put together unfortunately yeah. yeah it's yeah. it's time consuming and it's it's hard because like it's it can be distracting because the main thing is to win Exactly, yeah, but it, it become yeah, it became that you, that, that yeah. became the most important thing because mm-hmm. in the start we did it because we they were, we were not winning and they were not winning, so we wanted to be seen and yeah. like have a presence in a, in another right. way. But, it was like but when they start winning, winning, that's like it takes yeah. over and right. that's all that you focus about and yeah. things like filming everything and editing on the side becomes second to resting well and mm-hmm. making sure mm-hmm. that you are ready for your next game and yep. that you have seen your scouting yeah. report etc yeah so it, it it and also the girlfriend thing is not like, <laughs> it's, it's not a joke also everyone takes, has a girlfriend now except no not christian not christian but he has He's one he has, for a while has you, you never on know what christian yeah. is on and off. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, no but it was time consuming especially for you and Anders yeah. who did everything because yeah, me and we, christian weren't like that's we were, just, that. we were so single actually, and we were yeah. nerds so we would just spend yeah. all our time like uh mm-hmm. making content yeah. shooting videos no that's good though i mean that's what we're dealing with the same sort of thing Mm -hmm. if we didn't have this set up in my house where my Mm. wife builds out the studio and it's at my house and travis knows how to do all the behind the end the scene stuff Mm -hmm. and he can write up articles about it like with his eyes closed Mm -hmm. it all like works Mm -hmm. really well for us you guys have have a really good thing going but like i try we've all been trying to grow social for all these years and everyone kind of falls off because it's like it takes too much time. It's too much it's, time. It's hard to stay consistent. And it's not, like we were just talking about, it's not about the quality of content necessarily. No. You could have the best clip ever, <laughs> yeah. but if you don't have the momentum with the algorithm, mm. and yeah. like consistently putting out good content, yeah. then it's not even successful. You're like, yeah. mm. so if you just jump in and out of it, then it's not really for you, right? Yeah. Like social is the wrong platform to be on. At least that's what we're learning. Mm-hmm. For us, we're at least consistently we can hit every Wednesday with a podcast. Like yeah. that's something we know we can do, mm-hmm. but we're in the same boat in terms of all the social and the ideas that we have 
and then executing on it. It's mm. like, okay, but when are we going to do that? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And still try to play high level ball and all that mm -hmm. and have kids and wives. And stuff. Yeah, you guys are at the next level. <laughs> yeah. You're a little bit, a little bit, a little bit level. Yeah. Yeah. Kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll do it. It's even more we're, time we're consuming. We're not there yet. <laughs> so, so actually, yeah, we don't have any years. excuses. Who's, who's the closest? Probably Anders, I Anders, would say. Okay. Yeah, I would yeah, say Anders. Probably. <laughs> not, not me, at least. They're getting serious. Yeah, it's. Think yeah, they more more. Uh, they had a plan set out like a couple of oh. years ago, like in the in the very start <laughs> of their relationship. They had a plan set out, but I don't okay. know if they're sticking to it. We'll see after yeah, Paris. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see after, after she's his full time caretaker for a little bit. Yeah. 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 Dude, those videos of him after the painkillers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the narcos. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah the anesthesia the... was a narcos. He woke up from the narcos. Yeah, because oh, uh, yeah. Narcos, uh, no. narcos is uh, anesthesia okay. in, in the region. So. I just thought they would be the same funny. in English. Oh, no, I didn't course. see it. Oh, you haven't seen it? No, I don't oh, dude, so. so funny. Funny. Uh, He has like a uh, mini vlog on his Instagram, I think. Oh, okay, I think I he posted it. it there. Oh, nice. That's super funny when he woke up. He was just all giggly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know the feeling. It's pretty nice. You're weirdly confident, too. <laughs> Whatever I say right now <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> and, <yeah. laughs> and then after, you're like, what was I talking about? <laughs> I like, so felt funny. like I was like best friends with the doctor. I was like, nice yeah. job, doc. How do we do? We're good? Let me get some crackers. <laughs> Damn, these are good crackers. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. He has a very laid-back attitude to being injured, and it's very, it's very cool to see how he's dealing with it. Yeah. It's, it could also be beneficial to him. It's a lot of pressure being him and sure. having to defend an Olympic gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, not necessarily winning every tournament like they did before, um, leading up to it. So maybe yeah. it's good for him to have this challenge to to really test his his limits, and then maybe be the underdog leading into the Olympics. Because he right. will make he will make a he will make a full recovery, and he'll make it fast. Yeah. I have no doubt in this because right. he's 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 an athlete that doesn't require a lot of training. Mm. So what's it been That's like been nice. I mean, for you guys? Because yeah, one it was still one of my favorite social media interactions I've ever seen was when during the Tokyo Olympics, people were talking. No, it was the Winter Olympics uh, afterwards in twenty two, and people were talking about how many medals Norway's winning. Oh, like, well, what do you expect? Beach volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen that someone comment. Someone commented just the gold medal like story of when Anderson <laughs> Christian won, but you don't prior to the Mole family just taking over the beach volleyball world. You wouldn't put Norway and beach volleyball together very often. No. Mm -hmm. Like, what's it been like for you guys just to be along for an awesome ride? Because we talk about, you know, you guys um, you need to make money on the side, but you added so much value to the sport that you have such a recognizable brand. Like the beach volleyball Vikings are everywhere in the stands. Like everywhere you guys go, mm -hmm. it's been fun for me to watch. But I'm curious what it's been like having a front row seat <laughs> to the rocket ship that's been yeah. Norwegian beach volleyball. Oh, it's been uh, it's been some crazy years after Anderson Christian completely just after the clogging first when they f that was their first term I think together and they got a fifth they beat and me. they beat yeah. uh, they beat everyone in their <laughs> yeah. pool and they, they beat just, me to get fifth. <laughs> they beat you <laughs> to get fifth it's funny too oh, to get fifth okay yeah they yeah. okay and they the, lost to Shock yeah uh, because they played for yeah, uh, Saxton yeah, and Shock yeah, yeah Saxton and Shock they lost fifteen thirteen to go to the semis. So that was kind of the start because me and Anders played. It was a funny story because me and Anders played in Vaduz for the CV satellite mm -hmm. the week before, and we qualified for the first time mm. uh, to that event. And then he and uh, he and Christian decided to play a tournament in Klagenfurt, and they qualified and got a fifth. So basically, <laughs> from there, I were a little bit squeezed kind of out of the team because oh. they were playing so well together, right. and then. It, yeah, it, was, it was him and uh, Anders that started Anders Beach Volleyball Vikings. Okay. Yeah. So we started in 2015 uh, when we really when I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. And Anders was in his last year in uh, in high school. And then we sat down and said we have to do something because the system in Norway, uh, everyone quit it after. So it was, uh, they continued for one year. Uh, but after the Continental Cup final in our in Stavanger in 2016, when no one qualified, everyone quit it. Like all the all the, the best, older guys. all the all the older guys. There's no players left. And we didn't have a system, so we so we basically sat down and said we have to do something. We have to and, do it ourselves. Yeah, and we thought about what kind of what 
brings what could we bring to the world that makes uh makes it cool to to watch the brand uh and we came up with fjords we have mountains <laughs> uh-huh, right. so we sat like down and just discussed everything and then after a couple of hours we came down to the name beach volley vikings uh-huh. that was that fitted perfectly in what we th- could thought could be a, a good brand right so so from there it just skyrocketed with Anderson Christian just dominating yeah. for so many years and yeah, it went fast. Yeah, their, it went really their, fast. The rise went really fast. It went, they went from like being qualified team to top seeded in four years in a row. Yeah, I think, they had the skills. So the question was just confidence. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's something you slowly have to build mm-hmm. by beating teams that you didn't think you could beat. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it was like, oh, they. Wow, they beat Russia. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they beat, yeah. They beat, beat Brazil. Like wow, that's, that's right. crazy. It's insane. Oh, now they beat uh, Brazil. They beat uh, Alison. Yeah, wow. and they beat and USA. They, who they was do big it at yeah. that time. And they so. do it more and more, and you gain confidence, and then they just beat everyone. Like, there's no one else yeah. to beat. I guess no. we're the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we got to figure out how to stay at the top. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Did a good uh, job it's been a it's been a really cool ride. Like also being able to learn from them and being in the same team and see how they how they develop and how they go into games and yeah. their mentality is like because they're ice cold yeah like for sure there, there's no people say it's it's not so fun to play against them because they they're very like uh focused mm-hmm. and people are trying to like set them off kind right, of right, power, right. try to find some ways to win yeah. but they're just so concentrated yeah. all the time so it's uh it's really weird and re- very cool to see that you can be in the zone right uh and just go point by point so until you win yeah and yeah. for six straight years to stay in that same zone yeah because mm-hmm. like, the last time that you were here was 2018 mm-hmm. and that was when the rocket ship started to take off when mm-hmm. they won what it was vega it was a crazy stretch yeah mm-hmm. they won where they won how many did they win in a row I mean, it was like Stad, Vienna, Hamburg, well, Vegas. There was a lot of games in yeah. a row, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because after they won gold in Gestad the first time, yeah. they won just gold by gold. Yeah. I think for seven or eight or ten consecutive tournaments, I think it was it was crazy. <sighs> just after that one, and they just got the confidence, and they won four European championships in a row. Um, yeah, I think one year they won 94 games and lost yeah. four or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> Five. Yeah. I don't quote me on it, but it was something ridiculous. Something yeah. crazy. It seems like the whole thing happened fairly quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, a long span now, but I mean, we're talking about them as one of the greatest, obviously one of the greatest teams, but in the conversation for the greatest team mm-hmm. ever in like a what six year span? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like most of these other guys, yeah. the Ricardos and Manuels and Phils, and like, yeah. they were around for like what? Decades. What, yeah, decades. Yeah. And these guys are just doing it within yeah. half a decade. Almost. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's insane. Uh, a, a it's team insane. from Norway, a country that never mm, never been really good at summer. Well, summer why sports. would you be good at beach volleyball? You didn't grow up <laughs> like like I did playing beach, right? Yeah. Not. Re- I mean, maybe you guys did, but yeah. like in, a, in a completely different no. way. In a, in a different way. Yeah. 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 Was were the courts that you guys first started playing on actual beach courts or man made like indoor? Or? Um, well, I would trying say to remember probably, um, probably indoor I would hmm. say because in Norway you you can only play beach ball ball for three months a year outside yeah exactly if you're if you're lucky and uh, yeah we have some good indoor gyms but um, beach ball ball was uh, we were lucky to see Stavanger that was like to watch like, the yeah, like Christian said a couple of times that first time he went to Stavanger for the Grand Slam that was kind of where he found like this is what i wanted to right. do uh we've so, always had a little bit of a culture for yeah. beach volleyball uh, starting from the when it became a thing with uh young kualaim and beyond mosada were one of the best teams yeah. in the 90s in, in the world yeah, in, the, yeah, yeah. in the 90s and my my dad was a part of of, of that journey with with the coaching staff and uh he coached my mother in the Olympics in Atlanta in mm-hmm. 1996, and uh, and there was there was kind of a culture for beach volleyball. Always been kind of a culture for beach volleyball in Norway because our best athletes didn't go for indoor. Yeah, didn't go because pro. Oh. we don't have enough players to make a good indoor team. So if you wanted to make it to the Olympics, you have to go 
the beach route. Mm-hmm. And so we've always had kind of a kind of a culture and we were lucky to have the tournament in Stavanger for many years. Yeah. That was hosted by Bjorn Moseda and in, in, in Yeah, he was kind of like the, the main 90s. sponsor. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so so we got to see the tournament. Like growing up, we saw a tournament in Stavanger and we're like, wow, we want to do this. Mm-hmm. This is this is sick. Yeah, so no, I no, think I that's where we kind of saw like or or got our first impressions of beach volleyball as a sport. I think it was mm-hmm. watching Stavanger. watching in Stavanger. And without this tournament, none of us would have been doing yeah. this, wanting to do this professionally or pursue the, the dream. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, we that was also a cool have, event. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a funny story where we... Me and Anders played for, we qualified for a wild card. So in 2014, we were, uh, I think we were the youngest, if not the second youngest team to qualify for a main draw in the Grand Slam. Uh-huh. He was, I think he was 15 and I was 17. Holy cow. That's uh, so and then good. I have a funny picture. My granddad took a picture of on the computer where he watched and we were playing at Dallas or Rosenthal ah. at the time and we were 2-0 <laughs> up in the first set <laughs> which is, which this, this picture kind of shows that uh, it, it's super funny that you you had you played your idol at such a young age and yeah. then you super. now he's one of the best of the best right so it's really really cool to see that's wild I wonder does Phil know that I don't he know. played you guys I don't know. in that tournament? I don't I know. probably played in that tournament. You're probably, I probably. I don't probably. know. Uh, yeah. What year, 15? 2014. 14. Yeah, it was a grand slam. Yeah, that was my first. It was yeah. before the major. It was Actually, called the major. I think we won Berlin, and then the next event was Stavanger, and probably. then we got a fifth. Okay, yeah. So that was like my first time in Stavanger as well. I yeah. think I met you there. I want to say I met you there. You could, were could playing, have been. but Nick, I think Nick Costello was like, this guy Hendrix from Norway he's gonna be around there uh, and he played at Hawaii so say, yeah, hi, say hi to him kind yeah. of thing okay yeah. I think we uh, it, it could have been could I, be, I started could be. I started UH uh, in, in 2013 yeah so around yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah. that could have been true could yeah been. that was a fun event that yeah was like that was really cool the best That's, trophies too yeah, sword. the sword. Viking sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sick. It, it was so our dream to have those, but yeah. then they discontinued then they, the tournament yeah. and we cannot win the Viking sword. How do we get that tournament back? I've only heard the most epic things about it. Yeah, we, I don't think we'll it's get it back gonna, in Stavanger. It's not going to be back. No. Uh, <laughs> that's the short answer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we, yeah. try, we tried this year. Uh, it didn't work out. Yeah. Uh, we'll for sure try to push for Elite next year or whatever concept they're making yeah. out of after Paris. Depends. In, yeah, a but in a different city. In the south, probably. I mean, there's so many nice places in Norway. I feel like it wasn't the venue that was like the, the greatest no. part about it. Mm. I think it was the swords and yeah. then... I mean, being on the water and the little town and just, yeah. it just had very Europe, European, Scandinavian vibes. Mm-hmm. But I mean, anywhere in Norway, I feel like it's going to be pretty nice. Yeah, I think For we sure. should pull a, pull a, and the weather in the south is better than in Stavanger. Ah, uh, okay. For sure, so. Yeah, you could risk it being a chilly week in Stavanger with like 10 degrees yeah, the right. whole week in rain. Yeah. But You're lucky if you have sunny and 15 degrees Celsius in, in June in Stavanger or in may if you right. depending mm-hmm. on when the tournament is but yeah we're trying to get it to the south because anders moved to christian sand like where i where i grew up mm-hmm. uh but now he lives in oslo he moved with his girlfriend but they're probably coming back in a few years so gotcha and you guys have hosted futures and, and one stars in oslo i feel like yeah one, amount, right? one time two I think twice, twice. Okay. it was yeah. it was a success too there was a lot of people that came to watch and yeah obviously there were good teams there uh we we all played in those in those tournaments and uh but i, I don't know why they discontinued that one as well that was before the pandemic so maybe it has something yeah. to do with this um but that was also yeah it was fun that yeah. was a cool tournament yeah. we got like uh, it was mall brothers playing on three different teams we yeah. all got yeah. Yeah. gold yeah, so what was the breakdown? silver and bronze I got the bronze so yeah. I, yeah, we got the bronze. I shouldn't Not have mentioned it no. yeah, I don't know why I mentioned so it, it was, it was, it was Anders, Anders and Nils the younger guy for gold and then Christian and Marcus got okay. silver and then we got bronze so yeah. 
we are the only team that didn't split up and ending up on the third place. <laughs> Not so nice. <laughs> it's too much pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a little bit too much pressure because they split it up and they didn't have anything to lose. They played really of, well, and, the, and yeah. we kind of like ah, we have to beat them now because they split up. Yeah, and right. the young guys played like the yeah. tournament of their lives. They, they still <laughs> didn't play the, as well to, <laughs> until After today. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. But it was it was a cool tournament, but nothing happened. Nothing more happened of it. So yeah. it's, it's a little bit sad. And <clears throat> the, the federation is a little bit scared of making a big tournament like that because yeah. they lost a lot of money on it. Yeah. Uh, in Stavanger, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the reason that they're hesitant to making one. But we, yeah, I feel like we deserve one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Because <laughs> Norway now, like, you guys have built such a mystique around Norway beach volleyball. It's like, what do they do? <laughs> no I think, I think, I think you guys build more of a mystique around yeah, what we do right. than I'm what we do. I'm gonna keep trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. Uh, we try to be transparent in what we do and stuff, and it's. I think their success stems from a very deep understanding of the game, or a deep tactical understanding mm-hmm. of the game, because um, they, you know, they. They start out playing even with teams, and then they realize what to do, and then they Make play on the opposing team's uh, weaknesses, and that's like their that's their thing, Anderson Christian, mm. and they do it really well because they understand the game really well. I think Christian has probably the best understanding of the game in the world, um, and Anders is a freak athlete, so it's a very good combination. Those two. Yeah, I remember, um, I think it was last year in Tepic, actually, I went and found their stats. It's like, I wonder how many times they win in three, because I feel like mm. they, they had been going to three a lot, yeah. but they were never losing that third set, no. and they were something like 20 and two on the season. Yeah, I mm. think. Going into that, I was like, yeah. this is crazy. And Phil and Todd, I think that they won like 48 straight three setters at one point. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's, <laughs> like that's, those that's elite insane. teams, they just collect data, collect data, yeah, and yeah. then third set, they just. Well, it's almost like it. you're. If if teams will let you get away with beating them without fully putting your foot on the gas, then you'll do it. But then if they push you to three, you're like, okay, now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's time to go. Full gas pedal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's been the same. We, I think I've gone to three half the time we've played them, but never beat them. Yeah. Like, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That whole adjustment part gets me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever the whatever the hell Christians coming up with back there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, they're they're good. They're great communicators on the court. They everything they see they share and it like all those little observations add up. Uh-huh. We try to do the same thing. We try to observe and talk about it and make plans. Mm. But it's, it's it's not easy to do it at the level that they are able to do it at cuz they can Christian can see things in the opponent's game it's like he oh he made that shot over there because he didn't see Anders going late on that block and uh, he hit the ball there yeah because he didn't see that I was standing over there Mm -hmm. so if I (laughs) if I then stand over there he's going to shoot it right in my lap it's like at that level Um, and for me it's it's very happening instantly yeah yeah he it's very like an intuitive understanding of the game it seems like I've never seen a team that move so well together without any calls mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. like christian like people will try to like watch christian like oh what's he doing to, mm. to do all i'm like i don't think he knows what he's doing i think he's like <laughs> he's just uh, instinctually feeling mm-hmm. it out and yeah. he knows when anders leans this way he's gonna mm-hmm. swing back that way and he mm-hmm. waits for and like he just knows and feels his blocker mm-hmm. like better than anyone mm-hmm. yeah it's not There's something more reads i'm sure behind it yeah, it's not something you can teach, and it's mm. not something that have been taught either. I think. Mm. Yeah. It's just something. Not many people play with one blocker for yeah. that long either, right? Like no. that long yeah. period of time yeah. where you just like start knowing each other. Yeah, super yeah. Instinctually. knowing each other movements and stuff. Yeah, it's, actually, it's, it's since, very, the, since the start, it's like a, they have like known. Yeah, it's it's weird. They just read. It's each just other a, well. it's just a strange thing. They it clicked instantly yeah. like this. No practice beating yeah. all the good teams in the first tournament together, and then just. Up from Wait, there. Klagenfurt was the first tournament? The yeah, first tournament together, yeah. 2016, <laughs> yeah. Mm. I remember that match. <laughs> Me and Hayden were like, yeah. Yeah, nice draw. draw. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking <laughs> Norway. Because <laughs> you, nice you guys, the older team, they were good, but yeah. like, they, they were like the uh, back yeah. of the main draw qualifier, maybe. Yeah, they were yeah. in the qualifier, and we, yeah. I think we did well against them always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, the young Norway. 
Yes. And finally. then we, yeah, we're like, <laughs> all right, this mole kid's pretty tall at yeah. least. Like he's, and he started siding out crazy. We're like, all right, keep it away from the tall kid. Yeah. He can hit high, whatever. And then Christian was just like, why can't I stop this? Like, <laughs> this is getting out of hand right now. Like, what the hell? It keeps squeaking it by. I'm like, and then it's not like he's that good. And I was like, I can't believe we just lost them. Was so, we were so frustrated. Yeah. And then, yeah, like a year later, I was like, oh. Yeah, that's right. why. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that game well when, when they played you guys. So. I was surprised, though. Like, I didn't realize that that match at that time was the biggest i mean every match was the biggest match of their career yeah, yeah. but like that win was the biggest match ever for them and they mm. had like watched me and john yeah. for a year or two before that yeah mm -hmm. which was just funny i was just like oh i didn't know that that i was like That's a stepping cool. stone for you uh, <laughs> <laughs> in that way and then you just literally stepped on everyone <laughs> on the way up oh, yeah man. That was, uh, but you guys, nice you've had quite a rise of your own. I mean, it's not like yeah. you guys have, have just languished in the shadow of Anders and Christian. I mean, the whole world has. But, yeah. I mean, you guys are playing some pretty dang good volleyball right now. Well, we had a more normal curve, yeah. learning curve. Right. 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 Else. Yeah. Yeah. Usually you get to your 30s and that's when you start peaking like a, around that age like, yeah. with mm -hmm. the experience. And then honestly, Christian had a freakishly steep curve that they were at the top like this. But we have been making progress steadily for some years now. And uh, as long as we keep making progress, it's it's a lot of fun to play this game. Yeah. And uh, sure. Did you ever let that, just watching Anders and Christian have that obscenely high curve, did that ever like get to you thinking, well, we should do that? Because you guys are on, like you said, like a very elite curve very normal yeah, yeah. improvement but yeah. when you have to compare it to <laughs> we were that. we were aware that it's not normal to do yeah, this. Right. So like, I've, I've never seen any other team do this before i know now sweden did kind of the same thing mm -hmm. uh going very quickly to the top so i i knew that it wasn't normal to be to be like them so in in that sense i feel like i've had a laid-back approach to success yeah you know? and decent training partners and yeah, it's, it's nice to face. it's nice to train with them. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> nice know to, that, uh, if you, you beat them in practice, you know you can beat everyone. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. which is uh, which is you, a nice. And feeling. you can't get away with doing bullshit no. moves. Like you cannot. Yeah, you have to hit the sharpest angle you can hit in order to get a point. No. You cannot just try to squeak it, squeak it by. Honors is gonna be over you, so you have right. to really hit that sharp angle. You have no. to really hit that high shot to get over his line and whatever so it's it's good to train against them because it really prepares you for what's what's out there on the tour mm -hmm. uh -huh. i feel like 2022 was kind of the year that you guys really broke through did you guys feel any difference in your game yeah we're we're getting more more um like the consistency of our level is like the side out is not as going up and down as before because mm -hmm. before we did a lot of mistakes uh so we are persons with uh we play with emotions mm -hmm. so we have so we're more aggressive in our playing style and mm -hmm. we have we show more emotion when we're doing a mistake or or if you do something well uh, we celebrate more uh so it's been like a up and down roller coaster uh but then you get to a certain point where you where you get a little bit more more better and better at it yeah not showing too much emotion uh okay a mistake is a mistake next ball think about that one uh, instead of thinking about the ball you had and then you lose two three more before you mm -hmm. side out again so i think our side out consistency has been much better um, um so it always helps to play against a big blocker a good defender yeah. uh, which has helped us in our game uh so yeah just Basically, we've shown up to practice, giving everything in every single one, and just getting better and better, which has been, yeah, a normal learning curve, yeah. kind of. Right. So it's been nice to to be in the in the training group, and uh, yeah, it's been a uh, and we love to play beach volleyball. We don't play beach volleyball for money. I would do something else. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I would quit and <clears throat> find something else to do. I would do a. Uh, job somewhere in Norway where I could, I could go to the north to uh, fish for example yeah, yeah. on a boat for three months and make shit tons of money <laughs> <laughs> sounds pretty great it's yeah. not too bad <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad but uh, we love beach volleyball and we have passion for it and yeah. 
it's a nice lifestyle. Yeah, it's also those COVID years when we were locked down, we were forced to train with Amish and Christian mm. day in and out. So I think we learned also a lot. Yeah. Uh, during that time, because in a, in a regular season we don't see them, we don't train with them that much because we have tournaments mm. all the time. But in during COVID, we couldn't really leave the country or go anywhere, so we we trained in that little squad. Mm-hmm. A lot, and I think we we learned a lot over that uh, period of time, and mm-hmm. we we had a we had a good season in 2019, but it's just a little bit um, <laughs> stung out, as we say in the region. Yeah. You hit the post of well, the, the goal, and you go the uh, yeah, goes the yeah. wrong way. Right, yeah. Yeah. stung in is when it goes <laughs> in the goal. Yeah. So a little bit stung out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in 20 in 2022, we we started. Yeah, gaining some confidence, like yeah. I said earlier, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's also when you when you see that you can beat teams that are good, you you gain a confidence. But there's so many games that are that are either thirteen fifteen or fifteen mm-hmm. thirteen, yeah, and uh, getting those fifteen thirteens instead of the thirteen fifteen, like knowing that you can do that and pull that off against good teams, is very monumental mm-hmm. to the game. And I think that's the biggest change. Is like yeah. also the Confidence. The consistency, too. consistency, consistency, and confidence that you know you can beat like yeah. good teams. And also for sure the communication between us. It's right. not always easy to be family and cousins. No, we, we also we right. also had a, yeah. a coach change. Yeah, we had a coach change as well. Ah, okay. Yeah, so so we, we were always coached by our by, by fathers. Our, our fathers. Yeah. Ah. So Christian and uh, well, honestly, Christian Christian is not related to Yetman, his father. And I, need to get, I need to get the whole family tree here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Yetman is. Uh, so my father. Is uh, his father is, is a head coach. And okay. Kuaga is my father and Anders' father yes. is the head coach. Right. Then there's Justin, who is uh, Yetman's neighbor. In, uh, in uh, where <laughs> I'm from here. They Norway, grew up together. Okay. They, they, they played beach volleyball together yeah, for okay. 10 so he knows years, the game. Yeah. So he knows also. It's not the just game. a neighbor. Yeah. But they, he's coaching too now, and he's he used to have the junior group. But then we really like him. He's, he's great. He's fun to have around. He's not as serious and crazy yeah. as our a bit more laid back as our fathers here. are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for us, we respond very, uh, very well to his energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, our fathers are very they're they're crazy they, they mm-hmm. can be very demanding and they can be very it's direct very, and very stressful to have them at tournaments because yeah, they get very stressed they, they're stressed right. they want to win they want and to Justin, they want to beat themselves yeah, yeah, to play yeah, yeah. Justine is, is more it's chill very laid back but you guys are already like we're always yeah, we're we're already already like like so we need <laughs> yeah. we need more laid back energy yeah. and that has really been uh, one of the keys to opening up and our Andrews game. and Christian seem very laid back they're, yeah, yeah maybe they're laid back and they need the coach to be like hey stop you know, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, tighten things up. Let's yeah. go. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's, it's that the dynamic change that's mm-hmm. been important for us too. Yeah. Yeah. I can relate. We got Mr. Chill over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nice having him on the road. Yeah. It's like, nice to have just uh, a guy who is like, like chill a, about like it. Caddy, you know, he brings good energy. <laughs> and our coach yeah. is in his room making music and stuff because he's like, he's good at singing and making music. So he's kind of like making coach, beats. You got the game plan? He's yeah, like, yeah. No, no, but no, let's no, make no, beats. Let's sing beats. <laughs> no, but let's chill out. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah it's actually, right. I feel good. Yeah. It's actually like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he came out with a beat. I like it. He has a beat for every tournament. Like, we go to Cancun to play that tournament that was over there and he had he saw these birds dropping into the water getting fish and he was inspired to make a beat so he's like made this beat for the cocoon I want to hear this now (laughs) is this the coach that was body surfing yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, come come on. yeah he, he almost, uh, he almost broke he his almost neck. killed himself. In oh a, my god, yeah. <laughs> that was a that was a tricky shore break. It was like a quick undertow. Yeah, yeah. I, I just told him like if you catch a wave like you've never done this before, if you catch a wave, never go straight. That, that's yeah, when you're gonna die. Don't go straight. Don't, don't go straight. It's a very unique. minute after. Go straight. <laughs> just a Scorpio. Bleeding. Feet over. Yep. Oh. <laughs> He came up like, oh help! And he was bleeding yeah, from his bleeding face. And <laughs> I was, because I saw I saw him cast away. I was like, oh sick, you cut away. Yeah. Like, that's that's so sick. And then he didn't reply. And it was all He's it was like, on face. on yeah. all fours. And I saw the blood trail, leaving the the whitewash yeah. from the from the wave. And I was like, fuck, that's not good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like he, but I thought that he just scraped his face or something. But I, I came up face and like. Mind. Yeah, which it did, but it was worse because he 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 Scorpio. Like yeah, 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 yeah. He took his neck. He and took he his neck, and he couldn't. He was tingling in yeah, his uh, toes and everything. Yeah. That was a that was a scary scary yeah. moment. Very scary. 
I feel yeah. like that's what most people would think that Norwegians would look like playing beach volleyball. Exactly. <laughs> Body yeah. surfing and playing beach volleyball. Right. Right. Not, it's not yeah, for it's you not guys. Not <laughs> the water's not frozen, guys. <laughs> yeah. How did you How did you end up at Hawaii? Because you're a bit of a waterman now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's... You it's, can speak a little pigeon, too. Yeah, every yeah once no, in a while. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to offend uh, the whole, uh, all the islands. <laughs> But I, it's kind of, it's a long but a short story. I, I was part of this regional team in Norway. We had a really good regional team in the in the West. So all my age group and an age group above, we had this Canadian coach. Um, that once a year we would do like trips to, to Canada to Alberta and playing, um, playing some tournaments over there. So we went for three weeks, played some tournaments, and in, in the final of uh, of one tournament, we played this this kid that was really good, and he had like the rumors about him was that he had he was ready to play for University of Hawaii uh, volleyball, and we 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 never heard about this. Yeah, uh, well, you can play volleyball in Hawaii. What's <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> so it's kind of cool. No one knows. No yeah. one knows a lot about Hawaii, so right. we like. You still think it's just grass shacks and coconut trees? Yeah, it's like, like I know yeah. it's a tropical paradise, but I don't know so much about it. But okay, they have volleyball, that's cool. Um, so we checked out some videos on YouTube from uh, from Hawaii. We saw like Jason Ring play. Uh -huh. and, okay. And we saw the crowd go uh, insane at the stand sheriff. Yeah. I'm like, what, what is this place? Right. This is, that's crazy. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I, was, I was intrigued by it and I didn't think that... I would be good enough to play uh, at this level, but I I was finishing up at Top Valley, which is our high school in no in Norway, and I wanted to make another like the next move. I really wanted to to do beach, but like Matthias said, uh, there was not a really good program back mm -hmm. then. You couldn't really you couldn't really do it in a sustainable way right. back then. So I was intrigued by the by indoor uh, and. Uh, Doing studies at the at the same time, so I I sent an email to the coach of of Hawaii with with a skill tape like a mm -hmm. video of me playing Charlie Wade at the time. That was Charlie Wade. Charlie, yeah, yeah. And uh, they were they liked what they saw. They were interested, and then they came out. They come they came out to Top to watch me play, and uh, then I I signed with them shortly after. It's like. <laughs> Kind of out of nowhere. And it happened no really fast, and, and, and that's not something that's normal that you are able to get on a team, right? As a senior in high school, because they sign people pretty early on in college, mm -hmm. right? So, so I was really lucky, and yeah, I, I started that journey, and it was it was amazing. I was really lucky to to play there, and we had a good, uh, not good, but great coaching staff. Uh, Milan Zarkovic, who's still working for University of Hawaii, yeah. he, uh, he became the assistant coach that year, and he's he's an amazing coach, and he's doing also great things for UH still yeah. to this day. They, he's uh, the brain. They're one of the strongest programs right mm -hmm. now. So it's uh, and he started it. Best program Hawaii's ever had, and they have had a good program for sure. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I mean they've never won. They they won one national title and it got taken away when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, oh, Tony, really? Tony yeah. Ching, yeah. Yeah, because cause one player played, yeah. trained with Costa a protein. Kostas Theokaridis. Yeah, he trained with Greek, a protein. And he like played like little questionable pro ball at okay. one point. Okay. Took the championship away. No way. And it like <laughs> broke everyone's heart in, in mm -hmm. Hawaii because we were all, I was like a kid. It was, mm -hmm. That was like the thing to do is go watch UH games. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's cool. And they took the banner away. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one we had. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool to watch the program. Uh, start winning. Like, yeah. It's pretty wild. Speaking of which, they're playing in the, in the playing, few days, you said? Yeah, tomorrow? they're playing tomorrow and on Irvine. Saturday against UC Irvine. So tomorrow and Saturday? My, uh, my roommate and teammate and good friend Capono is, uh, is oh, coaching, coaching now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Coaching, so I'm going to go out and Capono uh, cheer, cheer for him. Good, nice. So it'll be fun. Well, that game will be long over after. We, by the time we post this, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the alma mater won. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But Hendrik, uh -huh. the, so Hawaii, that was kind of the start of, like, you're one of the tougher people I've ever met, just, like, the shit you've gone through, where, yeah. like, you lost a lot of your vision in Hawaii, right? Mm-hmm. 
Like, what? Can you just explain that story of, like, what happened? Because I feel like you just had, like, one setback after the next, and you just barrel through. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff in Hawaii also leading up to that. Like, I broke my hand at some point, and I had some other strange injuries. Yeah. Uh, But that was... So we played UCLA, at UCLA, and uh, I had a really good game. Actually, I was... I was kind of... It was my sophomore year, but I was... Like really starting to feel strong, like the college workout program started mm-hmm. work, and I, I felt good. I was hitting some crazy jumpsters that I never <laughs> hit before. I thought, Thor, I felt, Thor's hammer started <laughs> evolving. I felt really good, and uh, I travel. We travel back to islands the next day, and I, I wake up, and I have like this um, pink eye. It's called, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. And uh, I've had it before. I didn't think much of it. Right. I use contact lenses, so it's it's something that happens every yeah. once in a while. So I I went to the health center to pick up some eye drops, used those, um, went back to sleep, and then the next morning again, it was just complete darkness. Like the eye was just uh, glued shut with yeah. the same pink eye yeah. stuff, and I pried it open and I I looked, I couldn't look out of it. I, I saw it with my other functioning eye, right? And it was just complete white, so it was it was it was really scary, and it was very light sensitive, so it it hurt it a lot to walk outside, and it was it was really really quite serious. So then I, from that point, I got bounced around from one expert to another. They couldn't really figure out what it was. I went all over the island to see to see medical help. And uh, during the span of like a week or two, um, I was like things started things started to get better. Mm. I started to regain some vision. I was doing eye drops every thirty minutes. Every thirty minutes. Uh, yeah, like and a bunch of them too. I was doing everything. I was I was I purchased I purchased one eye drop that was like anti fungus or something. Yeah. That, that was like this big. And cost five hundred fifty bucks. So oh. Like, oh. <laughs> oh my <laughs> crazy, god! Just the craziest medication. I took it all. Yeah. I started to get better, and my eye doctor was like, "Okay, we can taper off some of the eye drops. I'm gonna taper off these." Once I st- once I started doing that, it kicked back in. Really? And they were like, "Okay, I don't know what to do. We just we gotta send you to some real professionals, and then we gotta pray that uh, that you'll make it." Because by that time, it, it there was the corneal, well, the stuff was gnawing into my cornea. Mm-hmm. So it had gone really far already. So I went to UCLA, back to UCLA, ironically, where it, where it kind of started. Or I don't know if it started there, but right. that's where... They flew up to LA. Yeah, flew UCLA me up to UCLA, health, yeah. to the health center there. I got very good professional help, and they, they figured it out within uh, a couple of days with the craziest equipment that I've ever seen. I did <laughs> so many strange tests. <laughs> and yeah, so the aftermath was me not being able to see well out of that eye. And uh, I wore a patch for the longest time. Everyone, everyone thought I looked badass. You'd have to be the scariest <laughs> dude, if you, especially if you had a beard at the time. And then <laughs> in Hawaii, we had this strict shaving rule. Okay. So we had to shave twice a week to look like military or look professional for the yeah. games. Right. Which I, yeah, this is counterculture right, right now. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> opposite in so, so I grew I grew a beard during that time, and I wore an eye patch. So when the the boys saw me again, they were like, "They're super stoked to see me because <laughs> <laughs> I looked so sick," you know. And uh, but it was a bad timing for me to have this incident because we we had it into the na- national championships for the first time in in forever. Uh, it was a really big deal for Hawaii, and uh, I was it was shit for me not to be a part of the squad that could play at that time. But I was I was I was with them during the NCAA's. Uh, we got a third or something. Um, and uh, yeah, for me at that time, I didn't know if I could even play. If, properly again because I was a uh, I was an outside hitter slash opposite I needed to pass and mm-hmm. do these things and 
it's hard to do if you have limited <laughs> yes, vision, yeah, like, yeah. especially like college level. It's it's good, good serving level, For so sure, you yeah. gotta be a good passer. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was ever, ever going to be able to do that again. Um, but I decided uh, it's nice to do school, so I'm going to keep going with this and see if I at least I can finish my mm. my school and see if I can play a little bit. And uh, so I started. Um, I started to play again, and then like over the summer, I played a lot of beach because mm-hmm. that's what I did in the summers. I would f- I would do college indoor. Summers I do beach the whole summer, so I kind of relearned to play did you a little in bit. Stay in Hawaii, or did you go back to? I Norway? went to Norway just okay. to play the European tournaments. Got it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I kind of relearned how to do stuff with beach because it's obviously a little bit slower than indoor. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it kind of worked out. I started to to regain some confidence in my game after a little bit. I had to play with thick goggles, thick goggles to protect my eye because it was still healing. Right. And uh, so, it ended so I up looked being really like, s- a, like an organism, like a bacteria. Or it was something? it was a bacterial right. infection. Jeez. Yeah, a rare one. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but uh, it's not something that happens often. Um, but so I, I relearned to play the game through beach and, uh, I really, f- I focused on getting strong and I was like, okay, if I have, if I have 80% less vision, can I get 20% stronger? Can I get mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 20% smarter? Can I compensate with other stuff? So I got really jacked that summer. <laughs> <laughs> did, did a lot of weight training and it paid off. And 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 by the by the end of that year, I had I, I played some international events actually, and played some qualifiers in Tokyo and some places. And I I played uh, came to the U.S. for one, right? Wasn't that yeah? I played. So I played. Uh, I played you. I think you played hunting in uh, Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. We played you. Yeah, that was, that, that was year after. Year I after. Think. Okay, that was it. year after. Got but I, I played in Long Beach yeah, with okay. my friend oh, Bjarne, who yeah. went to Long Beach, mm. who's coaching now at Long Beach. Actually, he's an okay. assistant coach. Huh. And we were like, uh, okay, we're going to go back to school. Should we just sign up for this tournament? Long Beach? We have enough points to be in the qualifier. Might as well do it. We're, we're the last seed in the qualifier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We meet Kanto uh, Loshak in the <laughs> first game. They were in the game. qualifier? They were in the qualifier. <laughs> and they were, they were an established team even at this point. And they had won everything that was to win at junior yeah. mm-hmm. events. And I had lost to them twice in finals of junior events so it was a team that I've never beaten and I was that we looked up to a lot so me and Bjarne we have never played before uh, we decided to play and uh, we beat them <laughs> in the qualifiers so that was uh, that was a testament to that I could actually that I could overcome this challenge and that I did it fast actually so so that so that was a cool thing and then after when I when I went back to college I was re-schooled as a middle mm-hmm. middle blocker. Yeah. We needed a middle for that team. Right. So I started my middle blocker journey upon returning to Hawaii, and um, yeah, I I, fo- I kept focusing on, on getting stronger. It's something you need to do as a middle. You need to be athletic, and I I ended up as an All American my last year at Hawaii, and we went to the NCAA's. Again, uh, which I missed out on when I was uh, when I was sick. So that was a that was a big uh, uh, battle won at that point. Okay. And then, Do uh, you have full vision yet? Or no, is that no, it's like the forever. Same. It's the same. It's, that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, I mean it's 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 maybe a little bit better. <clears throat> yeah. But it's it's a part of, like the cornea is a part of the body that has no vascularity, meaning there's no Doesn't blood grow, flow grow back. There's no blood flow that goes through it. So blood right. flow is what you need when you cut your hand. Uh, sort right, of thing. Right, right. The blood flow comes and it creates a crust that eventually regenerates and becomes skin. Got it. There's no blood flow in the cornea, so it cannot regenerate in the same way. It's, okay. it's a different way of regenerating. So it's really slow. So it, it's it's a little bit better, but not much. It's not, yeah. no, it's not noticeable. So you've just stayed jacked. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I like guess. I guess. It makes me feel worse for losing four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the physical 
part is a big part of it beach and uh yeah yeah and I, I remember you guys, I forget the exact details, but leading into Tokyo with the Continental Cup, was it Anders had a asymptomatic positive? Yeah. And you guys had to quarantine? Yeah. So we went back from Cancun. Uh, but, so we skipped the last tournament in Cancun to prepare for the Continental Cup um, in that was in Madrid. So we mm-hmm. went to Tenerife and we stayed there and practiced and... Um, so we stayed in the same Airbnb as Anders and Christian. Yeah, and we uh, we really isolated. We didn't yeah, go out to we eat, were, and we yeah. were really careful about not catching it because it was an important tournament for us. Yeah. It was our only chance to because we were make supposed to, to go all four to play that tournament. Uh, that was take. Us and it was just like the, a routine uh, tournament. There was nothing yeah. crazy. Like there was, um, we didn't. We weren't matched up against the best teams, and obviously yeah. we had Anders and Christian mm-hmm. on our side. So it was just uh, show up and win. Kind yeah, win and then get to the final. That get to was the next in, level in June. Uh, so, but yeah, we woke up on the traveling day and uh, well, we tested yeah, for we tested traveling first. Tested for traveling because you had to show twenty four hour yeah, negative right, right. tests. Yeah. yeah, in order to travel, and so we all did that the day before. We all got results of negative, negative, right. negative, and then Anders, Anders like, came out of, comes out of the room. It's like, like guys, I'm positive. I tested positive, <laughs> and we we're like. Oh, we're like, oh, oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what do what, we do now? Uh, what do we do? And then we call our doctor in Norway, and he, yeah, he's like very strict on. It was very strict during COVID, especially also from him to go by we, the book. Yeah, to go mm-hmm. by the book. Mm-hmm. And then we went by the book. We stayed we're isolated. We isolated. Uh, we couldn't go. We're like, okay, go. Well, okay, we tried. I guess that's to, it. Yeah, that's it. We 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 sent so Marcus uh, was also in Tenerife at the time, so we sent uh, him and one other guy. They stayed in another apartment. They stayed in another, another apartment. We sent them. Call a team from home. That it's that is not that great. And we sent them. Hey, can you play? We 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 can't go. They tried to play. No, no hate for them. No hate they're for not them. That great no, no, they're they, watching they did it, a so good job. Yeah, they, they did, did a good what job. they could. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't enough. We didn't get to play the the final, and mm. it turns out that Anders is. Anders did a test uh, the retest next day. The next he day. retested because he was like, I don't feel sick. This is yeah. weird. Right, and then it was and just the, the, our doctor positive. said, oh, there's no these tests are never there's there's no no such thing as a fake positive." As a fake positive. Oh no, oh, god. And then, but he tested anyways the yeah. next day, and it was it was fine, po- completely was fine. False positive. But then yeah, it so was it wasn't too sick. late anyway. So then it was too late. Uh, we couldn't go, and uh, the, the signing was closed. Marcus and uh, and, uh, and uh, Nils's partner, they um, they didn't win enough games to yeah. make it to the next level. So that was that, that was, was it. it. We couldn't right. write our own destiny in terms of right. making it or not to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So that was that was really shitty. Yeah, being on the sideline like this. Yeah, especially when you started like the journey in 2015, set a goal like. Tokyo, mm-hmm. yeah, it was Tokyo. Uh, at least we we tried to get a medal, which we did. Kind of, you set that goal in 2015? yeah, we set that in twenty fifteen. With wow. me and Andrew sat down and said, like, one of us is going for gold in in Tokyo. Okay, uh, or wow. that that's the goal. Yeah, Tokyo five years uh, or it would turn out six years ahead, mm-hmm. but uh, five years time, we will have a team on that was gonna win the Olympics. Yeah. And, and at the time, it was cool you and start. Anders were we were partners. Partners, yeah. So starting the beach volley Vikings. Yeah, starting mm-hmm. the beach volley Vikings. Yeah. Was your vision with the beach volley Vikings to have it as the whole group, like that's the whole team, or was it just you two? At no, that, at we that time? we wanted to to expand, so we were because it was us first. Because Christian, he was on the senior national team uh, for one more year to oh, 2016, because they tried to qualify for Rio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he played with the older guys. Got it. So me and Anders uh, were. Kind of like the juniors coming up, there wasn't any system, like I said, and uh, yeah, we just basically said we we need to do something ourselves here, yeah. and we put all our savings that we have saved up as kids. Our parents put in a lot of money, mm-hmm. put everything on one card, and tried to make it to Tokyo, and yeah. which is a kind of crazy that one of us did. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it was like a, it was a really cool experience. Right those five years uh leaning up to the to the tokyo olympics it seems cool that you guys all pull for each other so hard that's something yeah. we struggle with in the u.s is we get pitted against each other so much like we're yeah. genuinely all really good friends like none yeah. of us butt heads 
too much. Um, but like we always cheer against each other and yeah. we're always there's there's just like this negative energy with the mm-hmm. US national team where we only mm-hmm. want each other to lose all the time. Yeah. That it seems like you guys don't really have. And it seems like it would be very easy to have being that you and Anders set that goal yeah, together, yeah. Yeah. you know, and then to see him on the rise yeah. and doing it not with you, but you're still part of the team and yeah, you yeah. guys all kind of do it together. It's mm-hmm. your younger brother. Yeah. I don't know, like I, I really don't know how it how it, the experience was, Not but a, I could see it going either way. And yeah, from yeah. my perspective, it's cool that it seems like the Beach Volley Vikings went and won the Olympics. Yeah, like yeah, you guys yeah. kind of did it together. Yeah, I felt like we're a team that won. I don't think... I th- I feel like we're a part of that gold medal, kind of, cause, yeah. in a way, because I don't think they would be where they're at without us, mm-hmm. and we wouldn't be where we're at without them. So... It's very, it's a very nice story, and uh, we're very fortunate to be a part of that team that are so close and cheering for each other. Uh, so it's it's uh, it's been very beneficial for for the team and to grow like this. Yeah. It's much easier than being two and for try sure. and fighting for yeah. every spot. And so it's been really nice to have to have that friendship. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing and growing yeah of course we're family right so, yeah. so it's it's always tough like when i when Anders split when me and Anders kind of split it up after christian came in right. the picture it's always like oh fuck that <laughs> for sure yeah. that feeling that mm, oh that could have been me or right. if we would have continued where would we have been at right but of course i'm super happy for them and playing with hendrik now it's uh it's so nice and we're getting we're getting there and just takes some more time mm-hmm. so so but it's very fortunate that we have uh, such a great team around and uh, yeah, yeah it's really cool were you guys like those cousins who grew up more like siblings where you're friends with each other and you see each other a lot were you like the cousins where it's like oh, i see each other once a year oh, we were we were together a lot okay mm. when you grow we, we stayed yeah. at completely separate parts of the country but yeah. we, we we hung out a lot together often yeah it's always always fun to go it was to always us and three yeah. meanders hendrik were mm-hmm. a lot of yeah we were we were in the same yeah. age yeah group so okay we're so, the oldest in our part of the the family mm-hmm. and on the mother's and father's side yeah. so we were we're always um growing up together and uh playing around and uh, playing yeah. sports yeah. together your, and stuff your mom and his my dad, dad mm-hmm. yeah brother and sister, and sister. Okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. So has Christian been formally adopted from your family? <laughs> That's the running gag, kind of. It's a running gag. On a, no, uh, poor guy, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He has to. He kind of is. He kind of has to. Like yeah. all the other people coming in, it's just becoming a big family. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been great to having Christian and getting more, more uh, people coming in because mm-hmm. we want to expand it it won't be just the four of us for many years so we need to build a system where uh the youth can come in yeah, and kind right. of take over eventually mm-hmm. when when we are not playing anymore uh so um yeah it, it's cool and we just try to expand even more yeah it's it's something we're learning is kind of as we get further into our careers is that the impact that you have on the game mm-hmm. ends up being a lot more important to you Mm-hmm. as you leave start to leave the sport and get on the back yeah. end of your career then the wins and losses yeah and that's i mean for you guys literally been a part of building beach volleyball in norway putting it on the map keeping it on the map mm. you know making history but then also you have this opportunity to pass it down to the next generations yeah mm. and it's cool to see that you guys are doing that mm. Uh, we need a document. We need a legit documentary on these yeah. guys. No <laughs> kidding. How have we not seen that yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's always, it's always kind of been something that we wanted to do uh, with our documentary guy. Because we, uh, like I said, we have a our guy that um, yeah. does videos for us. He's, he's a documentary that, guy. Yeah. And that, that's what he wants to do. But we we it costs a lot. We're, it costs we, a lot. Yeah, we had a bunch of meetings no, no one, <laughs> yeah, no, none of the big studios in Norway has really gone for for that idea we have a guy we have a guy yeah. we, we have ideas <laughs> talk off, off yeah. camera <laughs> talking dinner yeah yeah we have yeah. a we have a dinner coming up we can share yeah. some ideas yeah be cool but your guys i mean your guys story is so 
cool on so many different levels from the family to the, the meteoric rise of Anders and Christian. And I think it, kind of the stuff that you guys have gone through, that's an epic story in itself because you're still here. Like mm. in a way, volleyball took 80% of your vision away and asymptomatic tests sort of robbed your opportunity of competing for an Olympic spot, mm. but you're right back in the thick of it. Yeah, I mean, maybe we're just stupid enough to not know no, what, I think what other stuff to do. This is, this is like an alchemist thing. Have you read that book? I've never no, read, no, I haven't read that book. It's phenomenal. If yeah. uh, I, I should have it's one on more the shelf. copy. You yeah. take it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a signed reading in Guadalajara. Uh, Barra, you, you're going to Guadalajara? <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah, read yeah. it and give it back to you okay. there. Perfect. <laughs> Done. <laughs> but what, if, like, what did that experience teach you? Because I remember you wrote um, an awesome kind of Instagram Mm -hmm. story on that and i remember you saying something to the effect and i'm paraphrasing that sort of like screw putting everything on the olympics like Mm -hmm. because you can just get unlucky Mm -hmm. where your focus turned to i just want to be the best player i can be Mm -hmm. and if that turns into the olympics so be it yeah and have fun in the process a lot of people in our sport are very geared towards the olympics and that's like the big the big thing. thing that you that you should go against but it's just it doesn't last that long it's just three weeks of uh, i guess joy i guess it's fun uh, to be a part of and it's, it's like cool. that label too right yeah yeah it, it's, Olymp- it's become yeah. a big yeah. yeah it's a label and it's become like almost too big of a thing for for athletes in our sport uh that for me i noticed it took the focus of way yeah. off just having fun playing and enjoying the sport and being young and having a body that works well and mm-hmm. and uh, yeah just that those small things are the ones that you encounter the most and it's mm-hmm. the things that should be cherished a lot too and if if you're that good and if 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 it turns out you're that good and you do those little things so well that you make it into the olympics then so be it that's mm-hmm. That's cool. That's a nice highlight. But if yeah. you if you struggle and if you have pain and you suffer for those four years leading up to it, right. and then you don't make it, then right. that's terrible. Yeah, I, yeah. What's the point? Yeah. It was the point. Yeah, I'm so. on round three of that. Yeah, I completely agree with yeah. with what you're saying. And yeah. It's harder. It's easy to say it and like think it, but to yeah. actually live it out is mm-hmm. is tough. To like just, it's like. Yeah. Cuz you want to set the bar there, yeah, right? Yeah, for like sure. you don't want to to like not make it a goal. No. But then it's like it is such BS and there's so yeah. much that's out of your control and it's just mm. this la- it's like money, yeah. right? Like we all think we need all this money to be happy. Yeah. And then I give you a million dollars, you're like, "Oh, uh, no. No, it's I'm not yeah, what's, like, no, I'm not, I'm not right? happier. What's the it's the same thing, yeah. like yeah. I got the Olympic label, right? Yeah. Like I got it like subbed in and like mm. weirdly given to me. Yeah. I'm like I don't know, it, didn't really change too much no. like you know but yeah, you felt like yeah. it was this thing you needed to have yeah. and also honors and christian winning olympic gold which was right. the Even biggest exactly. thing that we could ever imagine as a kid yeah that didn't really change that many things no. nothing no, it changed to us losing four sponsors you <laughs> right yeah, yeah. how frustrating yeah. is that yeah, <laughs> no yeah after the olympics, yeah. After the olympics uh, uh, lost our federation sponsors. lost all their sponsors yeah. so after like, all okay. medal, that's so it didn't after. matter like it, it was right. was it for nothing just, was it, well, it's, like, it's just a weird yeah. feeling yeah then it's like so even weird. if you it's a weird win. feeling in oh, our yeah. in our team after the olympics right that's yeah, it's crazy weird. it's like fighting for olympic gold is like one of the biggest things you can do in beach volleyball especially coming from little norway and then making it and then okay, and then nothing uh, happens. And then nothing happens. Right. Uh, it get it gets worse. Right. Yeah. So it's, of course, for them they have some individual. They have Red Bulls. So, right, so right. but like the like the sponsors for the federation, doesn't change when you win an Olympic gold medal for European. Uh, gold medals world champion right it doesn't change. But in Norway so we have a strange relationship to the Olympics because. Uh, in the Winter Olympics, we win like thirty gold medals or right, whatever. Right. So, Dominic. so yeah. our people in so Norway stupid. don't regard as regard it as such a crazy thing because right. oh, we take thirty uh, of us in the Winter Olympics anyways. Yeah. Because when you're skiing, you can win. So you have yeah, cross like country, you can cross win. country ski jumping. You have right. a lot of different disciplines. Yeah, yeah. you can win a lot can win of gold medals. Seven gold medals like in swimming. one Olympics, and then in beach volleyball, you have to win eight games right. to get yeah. one to get the gold. And you can be the only one in yeah. the whole competition. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. very different. I like 
completely have a love hate with the Olympics. Like oh. I, I think in a lot of ways it, I don't say ruins, but like it manipulates our sport in a negative way. Yeah. Even though it's just so hard for us to comprehend it because we all love the Olympics yeah. so much, yeah. and we don't have like that. Our world championships, European championships are big, but like we don't have that one big event that mm-hmm. everyone all eyes on us no. besides mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And true. Uh, I don't know. I just hate that it's the Olympics, especially with we have country quotas involved. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it's not even the best teams are no. there. It's not the best, hardest tournament. No. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it's a uh, bit it's of a tough. false idol. It's hard to de- define. Yeah, it. and the and the international federation has a monopoly on. So everyone wants on to it. Play. You have to play for no prize money. Too, no, there's no, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no prize money. Uh, uh, there's kind of no prize money in the world tour, basically. Well, but, and and, and the, you have to play exactly. FIB tournaments to get to the Olympics. I don't think I I don't know about how the AVP is now, but. If it weren't for the Olympics, you probably wouldn't have played so much internationally. No, I probably wouldn't be on the world tour. No, because you have the Seriously. AVP. It's much yeah. better. Yeah, it's a much better product than than what volleyball work can offer. For yeah, sure. Yeah, and we when we watch the social media content that comes off the AVP, it's so <laughs> much cooler. Yeah, yeah it's so, <laughs> so cool. You're talking, yeah. It's you're so talking, cool trying, you're talking with the audience. Yeah. You're, the audience is we so like close. Shirtless. Yeah. We have yeah. Yeah. There's so yeah. many slow mo highlights and so many sick <laughs> photos like. First photography is like you see the whole yeah. action of an attack yeah. and a cool mm-hmm. a cool shot and then someone has the same footage of that from mm-hmm. another angle yep. and, yeah. and we play like the uh, energy's better we play old tournaments in Sakarema there's yeah. no photos mm-hmm. there's nothing Dude, yeah, I know. it's Insane. unreal no and, photos and in World and Champs they took away all the all the photographers and we brought, to save money we brought a photographer yeah, so we, we, we brought also <laughs> yeah, so did we, we, we weren't couldn't allowed in the center they shut down they shut them down they shut them down blowing my mind same thing Unreal. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I don't know. I don't get it. So when we watch AVP, it's like, oh, that looks so yeah. fun. Yeah. It makes so, so much cool content. Right. Looks fun to play. Just start signing up. See what happens. <laughs> yeah. That's what, well, when, hopefully they open up. Uh, when, Sam, when Sam last year, he was like, how do I play AVP? I was like, why don't we just sign up and see if they say anything? Yeah. They didn't say anything. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's just cool. get all the international Travis, players Travis, shut to up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> AVP is fun because uh, <laughs> we don't need Thor's hammer just hitting these scud jump serves again. No, I, I think it'd be worth it. Oh, it'd be amazing. I mean, there's this other. It would be even better the for the Sandcast uh, tour coming yeah. out. You hear about that? <laughs> uh, Big money. We'll bring you guys uh, out for it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'll show up. Hell yeah. That would be, that'd be cool. Yeah, I no, think it'd be awesome if the AVP no. opened no. up the doors a little bit. Because then FIVB would have a competitor. It's well, okay he, 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 it yeah, go for it. I have to be so bad. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but FIVB doesn't have any competitors. Right. right. To beach volleyball. It's a monopoly. It's a, yeah, they have a monopoly. They have the monopoly like mostly because of the Olympics. Yeah, too, yeah. Because right? of the Olympics. So if. So. If players were to say, <laughs> "No, we're not, not gonna play." All right, we're we don't need the Olympic bid. Yeah, then we can do anything we want. For sure, right? Yeah, it changes a lot. It and changes then, a lot. And then they'd have to make the decision of like, let's say, an Anders and Christian yeah. leave. Yeah. Well, now, do you not want them in the Olympics? Do you yeah. not want them on your tour? Like, you have yeah. to allow them to play ball there. Yeah, and then the ISC will look to to FOEB and say, "Hey, why is nobody playing?" Yeah. Why doesn't anyone wants to join or fight for an Olympic spot? Right. No, because it it doesn't give you anything. Yeah. Besides uh, glory and honor to be an Olympian. Right. Yeah. You Which can is call a... yourself an Olympian. It's cool. Yeah. But forty years down the road, nobody will remember you anyways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, and you don't make any money out of it. It's a big. It's a giant business mm. play where yeah. you can't. They take your sponsors away for yeah. the event. Yeah, like this is how these are the people that helped us get <laughs> yeah. here, and, and then you're they're not like, allowed to show them. You can't even put them on your social media during this event because we are making money off these other big sponsors. Right. Yeah. And we told them that none of the athletes we allow to play will show their sponsors. It's a uh, it's a hell of a racket. Oh yeah. And I it mean. Is. It's you massive. almost have to tip your cap to them. It's like you guys are geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> it's the world games. It's like uh, yeah. the only games where it's just like the whole world is battling against each other. Yeah, but it's so cool at the same time. Oh, it's like it's it's it's, it's, the coolest. it's, it's my yeah. favorite sporting event. Yeah, yeah me too. It's, it's so cool to Olympics. watch. You get you get to watch so much sports. All the best uh, people are there. All the best athletes, but. Not necessarily all the not, best. Not, 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 not everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, not like 
tennis, nobody cares right about the Olympics. Well, but then also like, basketball, probably no one right cares so much about the Olympics. It's like yeah. a basketball for the NBA guys. It's almost like a bucket list thing. Yeah. It's yeah, like a, I, okay. I should yeah. check that out. I like Steph that, Curry yeah. is like, you know, I haven't done that yet. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, Let's yeah, do I'm gonna do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. I need a, I could use a gold medal on my yeah. resume. Yeah, It'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but for them, it's. Uh, it's more of an experience than it is yeah. like an, a career a, accomplishment. I, I think it's a cool experience. For sure. Yeah. When well, I I just saw some pictures uh, from Rio, from mm-hmm. Copacabana. Yeah. Like the, like the big sand accord yeah. right at the beach. Yeah. It looks amazing. That was a cool venue. Yeah. But yeah, then well, you have we, Tokyo. We went there the other day. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. In Copa. Yeah. We went there after Sakurama and we imagined. Imagine the court. Yeah. The stadium and yeah. the, the, the people around going crazy. Atmosphere and the yeah. crowd and everything. And that must have been a crazy. Dude, you guys should see experience. the video. Have you seen that video of the event that happened back in the day with Loyola and Karch? I've and seen a couple the of the ones and, uh, where they had the helicopter footage and they're showing the. Yeah. It was a stadium, yeah. probably 20,000, I guess. Huge. Yeah. And then they pan out, the and line. the line's just going. You're like, when's it going to end? It just goes like uh, uh, a mile down the beach. Uh, yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Kent's, Kent showed me some of the stuff that he has. I don't know. I haven't seen that video, but he's like, dude, there it, there were no rules in that place either. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, then you have Tokyo, where it's like the most no. beautiful stadium ever. Yeah. But there's no one. No one there. Like, yeah. so how, 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 was, how was it to play? I mean, it was probably, well... Either way, it was. I was playing with house money, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was quiet. I yeah, don't know. It felt quiet. like a like a normal stadium match where you're not playing. A, <laughs> yeah, a where there's no one. Home team. Yeah. <laughs> like if we played you guys in the stadium and yeah, there would be a few fans, not. but yeah. not like. It felt like going well. crazy. Yeah. We had yeah, like the best stats in that whole tournament, <laughs> or something, didn't you? Oh yeah, I had yeah. the best hitting percentage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like Jake, here's my set. I can't promise any digs. <laughs> First time full time defense. Oh yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I'll claim that. Um, yeah, that's sick. But it was it was weird. Yeah. And then like to be that moment that we all dream of, yeah. right? Where it's like, I'm playing in the Olympics. What's it gonna be like? And it's like uh-huh. crickets. Mm. Yeah. What? Mm. But then the camera's there, like in your face and you're like everyone's watching yeah. <laughs> and this camera is like yeah. it was really weird yeah. but it's like we were talking about earlier where you build this experience up in your head <clears throat> yeah and then it's like oh it's like just happened i was eating dinner that night <clears throat> we played like at 11 p.m first match so like it's so hard to stay the whole day mm. you know it's like no, I, yeah. I hate those it's eight, i hate those it's late ones 8 p.m and you're like yeah. wow i still don't play for three hours or you're like eating dinner and I went and ate dinner by myself, and it was, like, kind of quiet in the cafeteria. I was just like, this is weird. I don't feel like I'm going to go play in the Olympic. Like, this doesn't feel like a big deal. No one here gives a shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just, like, eating in a cafeteria by myself. I'm going to go, like, show up, get on this bus. It's, like, quiet. Yeah. It's like, this is going to play in the Olympics? Like, yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You build it up to be something, and then, I mean, you have exactly. no control of how it how it plays out. Yeah. Exactly. If you build something up to be too high, then you're... yeah. The real thing is not necessarily going to reach those expectations right. and you're going to get disappointed. Right. So it's all about keeping the expectations low. Right. And when you, oh, when you go over, that's when you will feel... Have that experience. Have right? a good experience. Yeah. The, a lot of people have like the, the, what are they called? The gold medal depression, right? Yeah. Where, where they get to that mm-hmm. point and they realize like, I dedicated my whole life to it for this mm. like they thought it was going to be a high at that moment mm. when in reality like your gift was the journey getting yeah, there exactly. yeah the the high at the end was actually the end of it yeah. right and now you have to go figure out something else did you guys um see any of that did your brother or christian experience any of that because i know like phil came out and talked about it okay. mm. april's talked about it Sp- at times sponsor she yeah. said that flight back from tokyo was yeah. like the saddest she's ever yeah. been. She's like, that I haven't, was it. I haven't heard anything a lot of, of it. Athletes. Yeah, but they they went straight from Tokyo to play a European champs and right. win there, and then they won. And then they won. So yeah. I don't know. I haven't talked to them about no, it. And there how there it was feels. a weird vibe after the Olympics and after that season and mm-hmm. everything. No, so everyone was burned out, kind of. Yeah, yeah very sure. very burned out. Yeah. Sure. Like our my coaches dad, uh, was most out. of all. Mm-hmm. It was really sure. burned out. He was had, I think he had more of a depression after the Olympics than yeah. the players. And he has a funny story to you in the European champs. He he was at the game, uh, the first game of the of the tournament, and 
and Anders, they did a lot of mistakes in the first game. And he's like, hey, guys, put the ball in the court. He, he screamed from the stands and Anders said, hey, Dad, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he knew that, okay, I'm burnt out. I just went to, he just went to the hotel, stayed there the whole tournament, didn't uh, go outside, uh-huh. <laughs> watched the game on the TV. Uh, even though the stadium was right outside, yeah. he just stayed there. Uh, stayed away from from uh, Anderson yeah, Christian. This is, this is right after the yeah, Olympics. Right after the this Olympics. Right after, like wow. a couple of days yeah. after. So he was just. They started playing out. the European Championships. It's rough, yeah, and yeah. then that was the first game. <laughs> it was yeah. all the game was on a Tuesday because uh, those tournaments last right. for for a long time. Yeah. I gotta imagine your dad like tried to shoulder as much of the burden and like energy as he possibly could for you know his boys, like all all you guys, but like those two going out there with all the pressure and. And they were actually on like a slump going into the Olympic, a little bit, right? Like mm, on yeah. their own standards. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would just think your dad's just like yeah. holding it all together, but like trying to shoulder all the burden for the boys. And then after he's just like, mm. yeah, them, just yeah. trained them. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's wild. Mm. So he was, he was burned out and I think everyone was. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was been a five, five or six year cycle since we started kind yeah. of. So, yeah, so that so was that the was, ultimate goal, and then when you reach it, it's like, what to do now? Like, and that's kind of when the our social media yeah. st- started to go down yeah, a yeah. little bit. Also, <laughs> yeah. after the Olympics, it was a weird vibe <laughs> yeah. for us because we were super sad and pissed that we didn't and like qualify. that we didn't get the chance to even try to qualify. Right, yeah. We got that thing taken away, and they were they had like accomplished it all at that mm. point mm-hmm. honest christian and our coaches too were burnt out because so much energy went into this and it was all the traveling through covid all the covid uh, stuff too mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. such a burden it was so yeah. hard to yeah. get from a to b during that point and everything was just tougher so as all that accumulated ended up in yeah like a, a break with okay mm. let's take a break from social media and then it just lasted yeah. <laughs> for too long for three years yeah. Yeah. yeah so well uh what keeps you guys here on tour tell me the prize money yeah. <laughs> Besides no, the just uh, the passion for the sport uh and the lifestyle of being a beach volleyball player i love to travel i love to like be here be in la for the first time mm-hmm. meet up here stay with friends yeah uh, getting friends around the world uh, for me, it's not about okay. I want to make the best out of what how great I can be, and then if I am not uh, number one, it's okay. Mm. I just want to play, have fun, and uh, play for a long time and see how it goes. It's because um, the lifestyle is very special. Yeah, uh, for sure. I like it mm. a lot compared to indoor, where you stay in one place, yeah. going to a sweaty gym all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's really nice. It's it's the lifestyle that intrigues me to mm. keep on going. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily uh, winning uh, right. and stuff. Yeah. It's always fun to win. Everyone for wants sure. to win uh, yeah, when right. you when you when you're in a game. You try to win, but it's okay. Five hours later, okay, it was just a match. What mm. a, what is a beach volleyball game compared to what you get to experience uh, mm. when out traveling? Yeah, so that's what keeps me going, uh, and I'm having fun at uh, while doing it. So mm. it's really nice. Yeah, lifestyle is a big, very big part of it. I'm very much in love with the lifestyle, um, like. Having to compete and perform all the time, it's, it's kind of stressful. It's, yeah. not, it's not what I'm in love with the most. It's, stref- it's stressful to always have to be preparing the best way, to be your best, to be playing your best, uh, facing off against tough teams all the time. You have those mm. pre-match jitters all the time, mm-hmm. and you know yeah. that after you win one game, you're going to go into the next. It's it's tough to be to be switched on yeah, so all, for the time. Whole, mm. yeah, yeah. all the time for a whole tournament. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's tough. So that's not necessarily what I'm in love with. I like, I like to challenge my my body. I like to challenge uh, challenge my brain too, because it's it, it's training to be on it's, that. It's a mental game, hundred percent. So yeah, and and then all that combined with the uh, with the lifestyle, it's uh, that's what kind of makes it fun. That it's we get to go to new places all the time, see mm-hmm. new cultures. We're very lucky to to go to these places. A lot of people. Uh, and we us back home that mm-hmm. we get to go yeah. and see so much of the world and actually be able to make a living out of it mm-hmm. at the most time and 
challenging your body while it's young and uh, being able to see what potential you have it's 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 also fun and uh, obviously uh getting better <coughs> still having a progress is also mm-hmm. a, a big part of it seeing how good you can become mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. it's, it's also cool. And you guys are getting good. Yeah, <laughs> Unfortunately, it's uh, fun to watch when you're not playing, my guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, we get drawn uh, yeah. up against each other a lot. So yeah. I don't know what's up with that. So, <laughs> oh, we, um, it's, um, I'll figure it out we, next round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's <laughs> nice to to see see the progress. I think also the progress we're making is because we're more laid back mm-hmm. than before. So we take right. it like game by game. I see it. Point. I definitely yeah. see it. Yeah, like it's, more before it was like, like yeah. see if we can crack them and make them yeah. uh, give up runs or yeah. like get get, get pissed Hendrick, at each other. Get yeah. Hendrick to be pissed <laughs> and rip the net down or something. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's just you guys are just steady and yeah. yeah you I already see. know how to play the game and you've playing against the best team all the time. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, the, the being steady is 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 important. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's something that Anders and Christian does really well. <laughs> right. It's just being steady. Yeah, it's true. Where can uh, our listeners follow along on your dormant social media accounts? <laughs> well, you can follow Beach Volley Vikings like Beach Vikings. if you don't do oh, that yeah. already. We we try to post uh, every once in a while. Yeah. And right. Where can they get some uh, Viking merch? We're going to... Gonna drop a new website soon, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Marcus yeah. is uh, an aspiring graphic designer. Oh, so there we go. Oh. Yeah, We're trying to make the design. young guys do yeah. more work for our uh, <laughs> presence on social media yeah. now in the future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, mm-hmm. You can follow us on uh, Hendrick and Mole on Instagram. And uh, I don't have you Instagram. Got hacked, I got so hacked. Oh no! I lost my account. So beach <laughs> but, but, but you can, uh, yeah, you can follow his dog. Oh, I can follow my dog Kiara the Volley Dog. Is this you your <laughs> dog? Yeah, it's my dog. That's your dog. Yeah. Oh okay. really? Yeah. <laughs> the one that plays volleyball yeah, with you guys? That's my oh. dog. Yeah. So if you, your dog's so, famous. So it was super. Uh, dog's once, more famous than yeah, dog's more famous. Sure, yeah. Yeah. And I made more money in the pandemic uh, off of her than I made uh, by myself. <laughs> hey, lean into <laughs> it. That's bro. a that, that's a really <laughs> untapped it. potential because what yeah. that dog can do is is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, good job for you for training her. <laughs> yeah. I, it wasn't me. I didn't. I didn't even train her. That's the that's she the crazy knew. part. She knew. She just learned how to play. Yeah. She has been. Uh, she's been on court like with us and just. I took up the ball during the pandemic and I throw it to her face and then she just bounced it back and then I bump set it back and then she bounced it back and, <laughs> and then we <laughs> made a video awesome. out of it and then it we started super viral, yeah, it was super all viral and then, sports center everywhere yeah. it's yeah. just crazy and just then we it. started like oh we need to put up a net and then play again two against two and right. and, and and it worked because she she sets good. Like the, the, sets sets, the sets are nice. Yeah. I thought you guys like found this dog, like the famous social media dog. Like, hey, can you guys bring it right. to play with the Beach Volley Vikings? Yeah. <laughs> it's your no, dog. Yeah, she, it's she's always watched she our, just our watches. practices. Yeah, she's, she's always she's been, always been the on the side of the court, like watching our practices. She's just taking notes the whole time. I don't know how. It's she a really does. special dog. It's, That's it's wild. Yeah. It's really. Uh, it's and she's so energetic. She's like she can do it for hours. But then you say. Okay, we play 15 minutes and then say, uh, Kiara, go take a drink. And then she goes drinking and then she comes back. Yeah, water, water, water break. break. She runs the water river. Break, yeah. She sips water and runs <laughs> and right she back. She comes back and then we start to play again. So it's it's really cool. Uh, no it's way. very special. And, and she watches volleyball on TV yeah, too. So she, like she, uh, will, she will watch TV. scouting and teams. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's cool. We, we made some videos off of her watching Anderson Christian play in the Olympics and stuff. It's, no way. It's cool. But um, and you guys wonder why I built up the mystique of Norway. <laughs> yeah, Even yeah, their yeah. dogs are good centers. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like every time we, it's like, oh, I have this old video of Kiara playing. Should I post it? Yeah, I'll post it. Post it again, like twenty million views. Yeah, yeah that, that's <laughs> your guys' key to that's like, what? breaking I'm, social. <laughs> the only it's thing crazy. that the only the, the shitty thing is that we I don't have a passport on her, so I can't bring her. So uh, I've gotten like multiple texts saying, "Hey, bring her to Vienna, oh, right. or bring her to Hamburg." So she, we she's big in Japan. She's yeah, been she's like, in, big, in Japan, she's really big. Like yeah. the Dude, Japanese, I think I've, I, I like, think I've gained like maybe to twenty thousand dollars off her. In just Japan only. In Japan only. No way. That's yeah. Just, oh yeah, just, you need just to selling rice. Just selling <laughs> rice. Just selling one time video. Bro, what about like dog food sponsors? Yeah, and, it's uh but it's lean into yeah, it. Get her an agent, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's uh but it's it's hard. Yeah, I, we I'm, always bug him because it's not taking Yeah, but I'm never home. That's that's yeah, the, it's that's not tapping into potential. Yeah. So my sister is trying to 
trying to uh, take over a little bit because she's more home. Um, Volley dog agent. Volley dog agent. Yeah. yeah, we need to do we need to do more because she's like six now. She can probably play a little bit more. Yeah. But when she uh, gets older, she probably won't play right. that much. But we gotta we gotta do something. I'm I'm on it. There you go. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> He's on it. <laughs> hopefully we can bring her to a tournament. Tournament. Uh, it would be cool. Yeah. To just. Yeah. Play with her. Yeah. Sign her up. Yeah. Sign her up. Yeah. For real. That'd be crazy. It's, it's funny actually. Like after the Olympics, um, so at our our high school at Topo, they wanted to do yeah. like a, yeah, a thing fun. for honest Christian, like story. a big like a big media thing, yeah, and uh, we're gonna celebrate our Olympic champions that came from the school, and then they pitched this idea to the media, and they're like, no, not too interested. Maybe we'll send someone. Um, to go for it uh but we're not super interested none no one were really interested and then we'd be like there's gonna be a dog there too playing, <laughs> playing volleyball and then they, every every single media no uh, that came this one oh. chick this one journalist she slept in her car overnight to be able to go there oh is the volley gosh, dog here yeah. so he's like it's, he's like i'm anders no. <laughs> where's the dog it's, <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculous yeah so then no, but it was yeah, probably during use... covid as well because people got a lot of dogs they like in norway they purchased a lot of dogs <laughs> right, right, right. during covid and then yeah it became like a big thing yeah. right. out of that's, nowhere that's actually story. so it was Sweet. it was kind of a cool story yeah that's too funny yeah, that's wild. <laughs> just another layer to another story yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> not a family member playing on beach wall yeah <laughs> no kidding Jeez. No. Thank you, boys, for coming on. Appreciate you taking the time, especially you're doing the full media tour. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I'm glad it's, uh, it's nice. we're really appreciative that mm-hmm. uh, people think it's cool that we're here and wanted to do interviews with us. You're yeah. in Hollywood. I think it's really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the volleyball mecca, and uh, we yeah. feel really appreciated being here. So it's, uh, it's, it's cool that makes nice. us want to come back more often. So. Heck yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, we want to come back more. Good. You're welcome. Yeah, we love Anytime. it here. We love it here. If you yeah. need to sleep on the studio couch, it's available. Perfect. It's, you won't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. The, the food, yeah, the food on is there. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's you're good. Just, Ready to go. Yeah. Now let's go get some dinner. Hendrick, yeah. you know what to share too. You're fine. Shoots. 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 Is, that, is that your outro thing? Shoots. Yeah.